Hi, it's Karen W. from Kitchener Public Library and today we're going to learn a little bit about solitary bees and also we're going to make a kit because solitary bees are great in your garden. They rarely sting. They're pretty gentle. They're really small often from two millimeters, which is about that big, up to about eight millimeters. So they're quite tiny. They're 95% of the pollination that goes all around, which means when we uh, have our plants be able to reproduce happens by these little tiny bees. We just know a lot about honeybees and we don't know as much about solitary bees. So we're just going to learn a little bit about solitary bees. So they've actually, bees have been around for 130 million years since the crustaceous and 80 million years ago they found a fossilized stingless bee. So you can understand how they've evolved into these little solitary bees that are very gentle and often very tiny. Solitary bees range from 3 to 12 millimeters. They're often either black or metallic colors and there's many species are uh, a green and a few of them have stripes or uh, little fine hairs. These are some of the solitary bees I found at home and all of these bees, whether they're solitary or bumblebees, share the same characteristics. It's their antenna, their head, their thorax, their abdomen, and their legs. Uh, they need nectar to be able to fly, so they need it for their energy, and they also need it for their young. Now, this is a honeybee, which you can see, they make those combs that we're so uh, familiar with. The solitary bees tend to use either a little bit of um, like a burrow, so they might go in the ground, but they're very small bees, so they might be like two millimeters long. They also use like the stalks of um, grasses or woody plants or little bits of wood. So they need something that they can crawl into. They put in their larva and then they seal it and they leave a little packet of food so it can uh, survive and start. And it will hibernate over the winter in the spring. Hopefully you'll have lots of little baby bees. So you'll have your kit. It's uh, got some fun things inside. So first thing we'll look at is just, uh, just a fun maze. And then uh, I thought this was kind of a really nice idea. This is bored from somewhere else where they actually had um, like a, a wood one, but it's the same principle. If you see any eggs, if you see a little solitary bee going into one of your straws or one of your tubes, and then you see a little waxy sort of sealant, it means that they've laid one of their eggs inside. It's gonna turn into a larva. It's gonna come out in the spring as a little bee. And uh, you can use this chart to just sort of to color it in and you could um, if you're into observing you could do the date the number of holes and how many eggs so uh, most solitary bees some of them will lay one egg inside so it'll be one with a little bit of food that they can uh, start their life and then others they'll lay two or three eggs so this is just a short video to show you all the differences in solitary bees and where they lay their eggs. So we're gonna get started making our habitat. You can use this cup to make your bee house in it, but I prefer to use a combination of, um, I'm gonna use a recycled water bottle. You've got different straws, so I've given you a collection of straws. You can see the different um, widths, diameters of these. So this is large enough for a solitary bee. You need them fairly long so that they have enough room. And it's better if the ends are sealed, but as we're gonna put ours pretty tight into this, uh, nothing should be able to come in. The reason you seal it is usually so something else doesn't come in and try to eat them if there's an open end. Parchment paper. And to decorate our bottles, I've included a sticker. So the parchment paper, I'm gonna show you how to roll these and make tubes so we can have different sizes and um, a piece of yarn to hang this all up. So for your supplies, if you wanna grab your kit and you'll need scissors and I use just a glue stick, but you could also use tape. The way I like to make this is I actually have taken um, a water bottle and I've just cut off the top. So you can also use like a milk carton and just cut off the end. And uh, you just need like, a container that has this kind of shape. I like doing this because I just think it's kind of a fun design. And then what we're going to do is fill it with straws of different, uh, or different size straws that you've got in your kit. And we're going to make some um, vellum. So vellum's great because it's got kind of a waxy coating. It's, it's 
Vellum's great because it has a waxy coating, so it will resist uh, the weather. It won't, like paper, just fall apart. It's uh, a nice environment for your solitary bee. And I'm gonna use my cup and actually make like a little guard uh, just to keep the elements off my straws. So I'm gonna start with my, my vellum and then we're gonna fill this up. So if you wanna start, you could just use your cup. It's perfectly fine. If you wanna just use this, uh, put your sticker on it and uh, fill it up with straws and then make your vellum straws and then we're gonna hang it. But I like to make mine a little bit uh, narrower. It doesn't take as many straws and vellum otherwise. You might have to uh, make your vellum a lot of it and make them fairly large if you want, because you need it to be tight enough that in the wind, all your materials don't fall out. So I'm going to start with my vellum. So you just need your piece of vellum. I'm just gonna put that aside. I've got some just uh, u stick kids glue. I use um, a pencil, but you, you're welcome to use one of your straws, or you could use a slightly larger shape. You're just gonna take these, you're gonna roll them around this. And it doesn't have to be super tight. You wanna be able to get your pencil out and you want different si sizes of these. So just roll them and this is kind of relaxing. I'm doing it outside. Normally it's quiet, but they are doing some construction across, but I am sitting out in a garden, which is fun to do this. So we're gonna do a few and then I'll speed up a whole bunch because it's kind of just a repetitive um, exercise. So you go like that, make sure it's sealed. So just press it really tightly. Then you drop out your pencil. So you've got this tube, which is perfect for them. They can come in and they can plug it. And I might make some, both this size and some smaller. Now, what's a great idea is to seal the end so nothing else can climb in. And it's really easy to do with these. So just put a bit of glue on the end and you're just gonna fold it over. So pretty easy instructions. So just cut off the end of either, it needs to be something that's a little water resistant, so either a small plastic bottle or um, like a milk carton, a smaller milk carton, which has that waxy surface. And then you're gonna start and just, yep, yeah, that's sealed pretty good. So nothing can get in there. And then you would start putting them in. So we're just gonna make a bunch and I'm gonna fast forward this part. My cup and uh, my scissors. I've got all my vellum tubes uh, well started and we'll just add all our straws at the end. So I like to make a little almost um, awning to help it. So if you just cut, this is easy to cut. You just cut here and I'm just gonna do kind of, um, just sort of a coney shape out to that big line here. And then I'm going uh, back. Now I'm not really measuring this. I'm just kind of um, making a shape kind of like that. You could just cut straight out, straight in, around and up, because the nice thing about using this cup is you can fold it and it'll stay in. And then I'm gonna put a bit of glue. You could also tape this. You could put this on the inside or the outside. I'm gonna put mine on the inside and I'm gonna uh, try to put a little glue on it. Oh, and, uh, and as I say, you could tape it. So. Before I fill my bee house with my vellums and my paper straws. So I'm just doing this. I'm gonna take these out and we'll give it a, a test for size. And I might wanna cut that off now that I think about it. 
seems like uh, that might be a bit of a, you could leave it on, but I think it'll fit in easier. So I might just get rid of that little um, white folded because we don't really need it and it makes it a little harder to bend it the way we want to. So I'm just cutting along here. These are just suggestions. That'll also, uh, it'll be easier to fit in. Glue along that edge and I'm taking the round part and I'm just gonna fit it in here. So it does fold. And just slide it in and because I've got some glue, I'm just gonna make sure oops, that it's uh, tight in there. And normally I would let this dry. You could also use, uh, if you have like stronger white glue would be even better. But that should stay in as long as everything's nice and tight. So what's really important is that all of these tubes fill this up in a really tight way. That it's, uh, so you can see that'll kind of cover it a little bit and protect these. So I've been filling this up with my vellum. I've got my paper. It should be able to be uh, tipped over and nothing comes out. I'm going to add one or two more because on a windstorm, uh, mine have knocked down in my garden a couple times and it's then I have to pick them all up and put them in. So just make sure it's as tight, it fit in as many things as you can. You can also put in, um, if you have any reeds or uh, hollow grasses, you can put those in as well. So this is really tight now. If I shake it vigorously, tip it upside down, in a windstorm, if it's rattling around, these won't fall out, which is a lot less frustrating. So it works um, fairly easily if you use a small container and you can roll these uh, different sizes. Now you can get the vellum paper at the dollar store. It's a dollar, you can make hundreds of these. Uh, the straws you get like a hundred for a dollar. So for a couple bucks, you can make as many of these as you would like. Then what I, I'm going to do is um, test how I would like to hang it up. So you, I like to tie mine. I want this part to be over, it gives a little protection for the straws. And I'm gonna hang it um, in two places so it's fairly stable. You could just insert this if you have a fence. You might wanna put this along fence and I'm just gonna put my, my, put my sticker on and then I'm just gonna hang it in the garden. I'm taking my yarn. I'm gonna make a knot here. So it's just a slip knot. And that will hang there. I'm going to have a loop and then I'm going to put another knot along the other end uh, so that it's stable and it can hang and then you can just test it. So I've just added um, a simple slip knot here. I've got my yarn to hang it up and a slip knot there and now I'm going to put it in the garden. I placed my bee house out in our courtyard garden. So it's hanging from a vine so just find a secure if you're gonna hang it, something secure, so it might blow around, so you don't want it to fall down. You could also put it against a fence or in some of these metal. It can either be hung or put in um, just a safe place. And if you want a place like this garden that has some flowers, so hopefully you have some flowers either in your own yard or some wildflowers for other people's gardens. And this will be able to be protected here the rain can fall on it it'll be safe and it's not too close to people to protect the bees and to protect us because if you sit on a bee they will not be very happy but overall solitary bees are very gentle and they just want to get on with pollinating and living their bee lives so our bee house is up there you can make lots of these the supplies are very inexpensive it's great for our world and they're really fun to to wait and watch in the garden. Um, as I'm looking around, I can see solitary bees and all kinds of things flying around. This will give them a safe home. If you're gonna leave that up for the winter, they will come out in the spring. So I would just keep an eye on it every now and then, see if any of the holes get covered. So this is Karen W. from Kitchen Public Library, and thanks for crafting.